a bit about me. I grew up with a single mom, my mom, my sister, and I, and we were poor. Not broke, not poor, but poor. Let me break this down so y'all know what I'm talking about. You see, broke is when you have no money. Okay, broke is when you have no money. Uh, poor is when you don't have any money and you're not getting any money. Okay, but when you are poor, poor is when you don't have any money, you're not getting any money. As a matter of fact, you owe everybody else money. That's poor, <laughs> right? Poor is when somebody can try to rob you and they'll just be practicing. <laughs> That's poor. Being poor led to several things, including not being able to afford swimming lessons. When I was 12 years old, my baseball team had gone to Mrs. Parks' house, the team pool party. And Mrs. Parks, of course, was the team mom and one of the best swimming instructors in the entire area. I got to Mrs. Parks' house and realized that she had an in-ground pool. I had never seen an in-ground pool. I'd only seen the above-ground pool. In the above-ground pool, your feet always touch the bottom. And if my feet touched the bottom, I was in good shape. We gathered, and Mrs. Park asked a question. She said, is there anybody here who cannot swim? No one else raised her hand, and I wasn't going to because... I could swim as long as my feet touched the bottom. <laughs> she turned to her older son, John, and left John in charge. John had gotten his certification as a lifeguard. So John had to be in charge while she went to go prepare lunch. We get in the pool, and I'm taught a new game called Marco Polo. Marco Polo is the game, of course, the childhood game where you close your eyes and you basically play tag. I was enjoying Marco Polo at first, but I got a little excited and drifted to a part of the pool where my feet did not touch the bottom. All right? Folks, that day I learned the difference between the in-ground pool and the above-ground pool it was a little area called the deep end. <laughs> and my head tilted back. And I remember tasting the chlorine. And when you can't swim and taste chlorine, you can smell death. <laughs> and I panicked. Knew I was in the fight for my life, but when you don't know how to swim, you have nothing to fight with. Till this day, I had never been more terrified in my life. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, Mrs. Parks jumps in the pool. They said she jumped over a table. Jumps over a table, jumps in the pool, pulls me out. She says, did you catch a cramp? A cramp? Uh, no, ma'am. Well, what happened? Can't swim, can you? I said, no, ma'am. She turned to her son, John, and said, didn't you see what was going on? He said, yeah, mom, I saw it, but he panicked, and I didn't want to jump in and make matters worse. She said, John, you are trained and certified in water rescue. How can you be afraid to do what you've been trained to do? She looked at me and said, Byron, let me tell you something. You put yourself in a very dangerous situation by not telling me you couldn't swim. This swimming pool is an amazing thing. But when you don't know how to swim, what you don't know can kill you. On the other hand, what you don't know can radically save and change your life. That summer, Mrs. Park taught me how to swim and educated me on how to deal with the water in the deep end. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to America's health issues, we've gotten in the pool. We're running around playing Marco Polo, trying to grab anything for help. And in the process, we've slipped to the deep end. 
and our heads tilted back. And folks can taste the chlorine and also smell death. Some of us are like John, the lifeguard, who have been trained and certified on the benefits of aquatic health, but too afraid to jump in the pool and do anything about it. Today, I'm looking for Mrs. Parks. Somebody who's willing to jump in the pool and educate the mainstream and tell them that what you don't know about this water can radically change your life.